I'm going to talk today about the uh, Plata Latina strategy and the uh, geologic concepts behind it and the uh, discovery that we have made with these concepts and strategies. Okay, the Plata Latina is in the business of looking for silver. And obviously the uh, best place in the world to look for silver is where we are, in Mexico. The most silver endowed country on, on the earth <clears throat> has produced more silver than any other country and continues to. Um, a, an important aspect of the uh, the, uh, the uh, silver production in Mexico is most of that has come out of these great epithermal silver veins. And these silver veins, uh, their location defines the uh, Mexican silver belt. Now the silver belt can be uh, looked at as a rather diffuse uh, entity. If you take a good look at where you have the really big deposits, you know, something over a, a billion ounces, <clears throat> the uh, grouping becomes much tighter. It's kind of a, the same analogy we have with the, uh, the uh, copper belt in the American Southwest where the really big deposits define very tight uh, lineaments. And when we plot them in this way, uh, we come up with a, uh, a tightly defined uh, definition of the silver belt that's about 50 kilometers across and maybe up to 800 meters in length. So that gives you a very tight geographic focus to look in. Uh, the other concepts you can come at is that most, or virtually all of these great high-grade vein deposits were found in colonial times by the Spaniards. Well, I shouldn't say they were found by the Spaniards. They were found for the Spaniards in many cases, not always in nice ways. And these have been mined clear up to uh, the present day. And of the uh, history of all these districts has been to grow out and out, and uh, that's where we are today. But any of us who have worked in the uh, Silver Belt have been struck. As you drive from one district to the other, you go over these big, flat areas, and you think, you know, the ones that stick out of the ground, we found them. There have to be some more of these great districts lying under our tires as we drive. And that's where Plata Latina and some of the experience from the uh, San Dimas district came in. So what we did was add to the Silver Belt the concept of the ore horizon, which we used so successfully in the San Dimas district, and go out looking for these. Now the, uh, the concept of the ore horizon has been around for a while. This is the great 5E publication of Pachuca del del Monte. And that is one of the uh, initial places where the uh, phenomenon of the uh, ore horizon was first documented. In this case, we have a plan view, and we'll take a look at the longitudinal sections of two, oops. Does this, no, that doesn't work. I don't know how to get this laser to work. Okay. Um, well, I am going to need it. That makes it easy. Separate time. Oh. Okay. Well, that makes it easy. Okay. I'm doubly dangerous. I've got in both hands. We're going to look at uh, uh, longitudinal. No, no, I'm way ahead of myself. Longitudinal sections of the Vizcaína vein and Santa Brigida vein over here in the next slide. As you can see, the ore bodies tend to be long and flat in these veins with some uh, fault offsets. And these show places where you might go to look for more of these just based on the concept. And in the stippled pattern, we see the uh, uh, approximation of what we'd call the ore horizon. Well, in the 5E uh, publication, they did a great thing. They took the elevation uh, or the ver vertical thickness of these ore horizons on, e on the individual veins and then contoured them. And in doing so, came up with some very well-defined centers of mineralization in the Patrico del de Monte district. And they came up with a very reasonable uh, interpretation that these contours...